I did that with G. Craig Lewis after I watched it. No, no, no. I got saved and I think I watched a, the G. Craig Lewis thing again. And I was like, my entire CD album is full of demons. <laughs> I have to talk. And I am actually, I feel a way. I think it was good for me to do at the time, but I feel a way because I had so, 3LW, you know, the first Destiny's Child writings on the wall. Brandy's never say never. Book, promises, promises, promises. The lisp is crazy. Cause you 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 didn't have to do that. I'm tired of your broken promises, promises, promises. <laughs> you didn't have to do that. I can't talk. No. <laughs> you, you, you no more. Go. <laughs> Baby, you can get. Oh. I just want my CDs back. That's the point. I had mixtapes. You gonna mess up your makeup? I had mixtapes on there. You're an ignorant man. I forgot about 3OW. Shout out to 3OW. <laughs> they were a vibe. Black. Kim, you can't laugh. <laughs> you holding the camera, Kim. I just want my CDs back. Yeah, but anytime somebody get famous with a list, it's like you got real talent. Because <laughs> they... They signed you with a with a lisp. I I'm supposed to move us along, but I can't because you keep going. I'm saying I'm saying that's no shade to nobody. I mean, I got crooked. it was shade. Everything you just said was shade. But we all got something wrong with it. I got crooked teeth. My teeth ain't straight, right? <gasps> people be seeing it on, on podcasts. I mean, you know what I'm saying. And people talk about it. I don't get mad. I'm getting braces soon though. It's the Saints and the Aints. Oh boy. We're doing this it's again. It's the Saints and the Aints. That sound like Alicia. It's the Saints <laughs> and the <laughs> Some people want it all. That's not funny, Jackie. I don't. So on the last po- at all. On the last podcast, we talked about it ain't. honoring our elders and honoring people who came before us. Okay. Alicia is our elders. Our elder. Okay. That, that's not honoring she her. She didn't house. honor any of our ears <laughs> at the Super Bowl. Okay. <laughs> so I deserve to be honored too. Jackie has been irritated. Of, is that the right word? With Alicia. Befuddled because they keep <laughs> giving this lady a mic. Y'all <laughs> keep giving her a mic. You see this mic? The piano is beho- like below her waist. Be, Turn I'm, the I'm mic sure. towards the piano. Don't keep putting that mic towards her mouth. Oh wow! Don't keep doing that. You didn't like Alicia's um, Sup? red red. Sup? That's exactly what she. Sup? Nah, I just ain't do that. <laughs> what are you talking about? <laughs> Alicia ain't saying good since the first album when she was broke. It was something about this lady being poor. That she sang good. Yeah, when she was braiding dude hair in the video. Yes. She needs the braids back. But a real woman needs a real man. <laughs> that one. <laughs> I forgot about this song. Anyway, we, I love Alicia Keys as an image bearer. As a singer, not so much. Okay. Image bearer made, made in the image of the living God. Absolutely. She got a you lot of hits. go, girl. She got a lot of hits. Yep. What are we talking about today? Like, because in studio, Alicia is always going to be different than live, Alicia. In studio, you got engineers, you got mixing, you got auto. Keep doing that. Just don't perform it. Oh, man. What are we talking about? I don't know. I feel oh, sorry for Alicia right now. So we were at State Farm for a comedy show and they were playing like 2000s, like club music. And I turned the press. Drop down and get your eagle on, girl. Never that. (laughs) (laughs) Shake that laugh at Taffy. (laughs) Wait, 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 wait. We were really really (laughs) bumping a song. Shake that laugh at Taffy. So listen, they were, it was an intermission. (laughs) Think about that. We were waiting on the the comedians to come out or whatever. And they was playing that type of music. And I turned the press and I said, I'm really struggling. Because 
I like this music. And I'm not saying all the music is bad. It's just, it makes me want to go out. Yeah. It makes me want to go to somebody's club because I love <laughs> music. I've, I feel like I've iterated that a couple of times that I really, really love music. So I loved the club yeah, for Jackie that reason. Yeah, Jackie wanted to uh, go to the beauty spot store and get a, a tall white tee and go buy some Air Force Ones. I did not. And so I told <laughs> Chris, I was like, we should talk about that. Like how that was, that was a stronghold for me when I became a Christian, how to adjust to not being able to go out. Like the simple stuff like that. Not just talk about that, but just talk about like how hard it is to let go of your la your past life and just- The world. The world. Yes. Um. Yeah. Because when I first got saved, before I got saved, I went to the club every single week. Yeah, I did every too. Every single week. Yeah, I stopped going to the club after a while. Cause, But yeah, I used to go all the time too. Then I got saved, and the most ratchet music I could pop possibly get close to at that time was Canton Jones. Yeah, and then you get saved, and you just had I hop, I and hop then you with your friends in the bowling alley every week and skate, <laughs> gospel skate. That that's the <laughs> most I could get to a club was us skating to uh, I love them like I do. I, yeah, I love them <laughs> like I do. I just came from a world so, where we listened to D4L and A-Ball, MJG and, and, and all these people and I, I love them like I do. I. <laughs> <laughs> what is this? I never heard of this song. This sounds crazy. <laughs> so what was the things that, that was harder for you to hardest for you to give up? In the beginning? In the beginning. Yeah. And then we want to get to get to how do, how do you work through it and how did the Lord sanctify you through it? But yeah. So God was so kind to me because I was a wee head. He delivered me from, from marijuana immediately mm -hmm. because I do think some things yes. are immediate. Some things are progressive and we, he just took the taste of that out of my mouth. Mm -hmm. um, it did become, or was a temptation when I had stress or anxiety, or somebody made me mad because I would always just, you know, smoke blunt to, 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 you know, cast my cares on weed instead of at the Lord's feet. And so when I would have situations where, like, I was just emotionally temperamental, that was a temptation, but I had to, like, fight and be like, I got to trust the Lord. He can give me peace because he's the Prince of Peace and stuff like that. But I, I think all of it, bro, mm -hmm. not having weed, not getting drunk, not having, you know, all of these even emotional or sexual relationships to keep me company or to give me pleasure, not even cursing. My God. Yeah. I had a foul mouth. Yeah. And so, like, for somebody to make me mad and me to have to choose a better word. <laughs> stuff like that. Right, right. Yeah. For me, the same, well, so, so, the same thing is really just, you know, sexual sin, um, and it was some things that the Lord took away from me immediately too. Marijuana was one. Um, alcohol was another. Marijuana was a little harder, but alcohol was like just getting like drunkenness. Mm -hmm. I, I want to just say that, that boy said alcohol, alcohol, whatever. Uh, alcohol, 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 whatever. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, whatever, man. Uh, yeah, just just getting drunk. Um, but I, you know, I I, I did with every hood do do when he gets saved and think I, I thought I had to break all my Tupac CDs and DMX CDs Eminem CDs I did that too yeah like but I did it after watching because if you it. break it you can't listen to it no more so Correct. it's just like I'm really holy it's really Crack, gone right I did that with G. Craig Lewis after I watched it no 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 I got saved and I think I watched a, the G. Craig Lewis thing again and I was like my entire CD album is full of demons <laughs> I have to talk and I am actually I feel a way I think it was good for me to do at the time, but I feel a wet because I had so, 3LW, you know, the first Destiny's Child writings on the wall. Brandy's never said never. Book, promises, promises, promises. The lisp is crazy because you, you, you didn't have to do that. I'm tired of your broken promises, promises, promises. <laughs> you didn't have to do that. I can't talk. No. <laughs> you, you gotta, you no gotta more, go. <laughs> baby. <laughs> uh. <laughs> I just want my CDs back. That's the point. I had mixtapes. You gonna mess up your makeup? <laughs> I had mixtapes on there. You're an ignorant man. I forgot about Three O W. Shout out Three O W. <laughs> they were a vibe. Black Kim. You can't laugh. <laughs> You holding the camera, Kim. 
<laughs> I just want my CDs back. Yeah, but anytime somebody get famous with a list, it's like you got real talent. Because <laughs> they they signed you with a with a list. I I'm supposed to move us along, but I can't because you keep going. I'm saying I'm saying that's no shade to nobody. I mean, I got crooked. it was shade. Everything you just said was shade. But we all got something wrong with. It. I got crooked teeth. My teeth ain't straight. Right? <gasps> people be standing on, on podcasts. I mean, you know what I'm saying? And people talk about it. I don't get mad. I'm getting braces soon, though. How did you <laughs> learn not to have an attitude and fight people? Even though, <laughs> even though that was very progressive. I don't know if I've ever told people the story that the week me and Preston were getting married. <laughs> why did you why are you finna say this? Because you you had I had a lot of, I was, I was stressed. An anger problem. Yeah, I had an anger problem. And there are times when in your flesh, you still do have an anger problem, but the Lord has continued to subject that to his spirit. Mm -hmm. But in the early days. In the early days. That, that, that spirit would raise up no, and wreak havoc. No, give you a buck, boy, no. Give you a buck, boy, no. No, 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 no. Week of our marriage, we, you had to go get a belt from the Gap. I feel like I told this story before, but you had to, go, or was it Old Navy? Because I don't Navy. think we, we didn't have Gap money yet. You, <laughs> <laughs> you, we were going to uh, Old Navy, you had to get a belt. I'm in the car talking to my mama. <clears throat> Not week of the wedding, like last two, two weeks of the wedding. Anyway, I'm in the car talking to my mama on the phone. And I'm like waiting on you and you come out and you got in the car and you start cursing. You're not a cursor. No. So I already knew something was wrong. And then I'm on the phone with my mama and she like, ain't they some Christians? So I said, hey, mom, I'm going to call you right back. I'm driving slowly through the parking lot and you open the door while I'm saying what's happening. You open the door while the car is moving and get out of the car. Mm. So I'm like, oh, not crazy. Really. Crazy. So I park the car, shut the door. I walk in to the Gap or Old Navy. I was so. You are chasing this white man. I'm ashamed. Around the store telling him, I bet you won't fight me though. I bet you won't fight me though. Everybody at the cash register is standing there with all their polos and their cardigans looking at this black man chase this white man in his solid 60s and telling he him. He wasn't in the 60s. He was actually really swole. That that even made it even more awkward because I, I'm like, what is going on? Long story short, he called Preston the N-word and Preston was trying to fight him. And I told Preston, I said, the police are going to come here and they're going to arrest you and you're going to go to jail. Oh, man. I can just feel the judgment so throughout how did, the world how right have now. You have, how, he ain't saved like he says. Who, have who you, is pastor? Because that kind of <laughs> anger is worldly. Yeah, it is. It, right? It was because ungodly. Because it's you enacting your own vengeance instead yeah. of depending on the Lord to do justice for you. Yeah. So how have, like, how how have you, we talked about this in our anger episode, but help us out. Yeah, yeah. I think for me, um, yeah, man, like, one, I just want to say the reason why he called me an N-word is because I opened the door. I didn't see him behind me. And I, I let the door close on him. And he said, you could have held the door open. And I said, I didn't see you there, sir. I literally said, sir. Mm -hmm. Made it more respectful. Mm -hmm. And he said, whatever. N-word. Mm -hmm. <laughs> you know, and so. When whatever, I, nigra. When I sat in the car, I, you know, it, Ninja. I, I, I meditated on the fact that. Colored really boy. Just, did, cool. he really, did he really just call me that? And so then I proceeded to chase him. I'm not proud of that. But I, to answer your question. Um. I think what the Lord had to show me early on is because I felt convicted for days after that, right? And I think what what I had to learn, and I think what other Christians have to to know, is that when God God saves us, but that salvation looks like this: it looks like justifying us and sanctifying us, right? What justification did for me is it, even though I messed up and chased the man around Old Navy, it still did not change my position. He which, would, which means because of what Christ has done for me, he has taken me out of a place of darkness and uh -huh. placed me into a place of light. Uh -huh. And so I didn't, I didn't, I didn't, my position didn't change because I was still in Jesus. Yeah. Right? Mm -hmm. um, even though I still had the, 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 the the propensity to sin, right? Right? Um, because of my, my nature is still very fallen, right? But because I've been justified, I did not stop being a Christian when yeah. I did that, right? Yeah. That God has given me that position through the sacrifice of his son. But in that, 
God is sanct God was sanctifying me. And so I think when people hear the word you're saved, you we have to hear that in the in the term of no, he's saving us. It is again like the sanctification points to the fact that no, we are just not saved. We're being like he is saving us every single day, right? And so every single day, every single month, every single year, every single you know decade, we are being conformed into the image of Jesus Christ. And so early then, that was ten, what eleven years ago. Mm -hmm. um, you know, I was being God was work doing a work in me, right? So one thing that people tend to lean on is be, they they assume that because God is the one who is doing the work of sanctification, that that means that they don't have to join him in that work. Yes. Right. Right. So he is sanctifying you because he saved you, making you like conforming you more into the image of his son. Yet at the same time, you have an anger issue that you have to actively put to death. Yeah. So what did that look like? So for me, it, it it looked like consistent repentance, mm. like coming, like I love Hebrews 4.14 where it says that we have a great high priest who was passed through the heavens, yada, yada, yada. For we do not have a high priest who was unable to sympathize with our weakness. At the end of the verse, it says, therefore come to the throne of grace with confidence that we might find help and grace in our time of need. Yes, sir. And so I consistently ran to God's throne and said, help me. That's that's literally what sanctified me. Yeah. Like literally, like when 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 that situation happened and another situation happened like that, and and I saw how disappointing you was, mm -hmm. and I felt convicted. I said, God, if something like that happened when I have kids, mm -hmm. or when I, I I don't see myself yeah. not responding like that anymore. Yeah. I need you to help me. Yeah. And through the years, I got more and more mature in Him. That stuff started to die off more and more, right? Because God is saying, in order, like, you're, because your nature is falling, mm -hmm. you are going to have mistakes. You are going to have sinful moments, right? You're going to continue to have sinful moments if you don't come to me for help, mm -hmm. right? And so, you know, I think one, I think one has to have the humility to say, man, even though God has saved me, it is still some things about me that is not good. Mm -hmm. And I need to run to the one, right? Because Hebrew says this. It says that because God became a man and dwelt amongst his own creation, he knows how to empathize with the fact that you're human because he became human, mm -hmm. right? But because he was perfect, he knows how to help you, right? And so that's why that same passage says, yet he was without sin. Yeah, yeah. So he's saying you can find grace and help at his throne. Huh? I like that. Yeah, you can find grace and help in his throne. And so that's what I had to learn. It's like, no, not only is it unlimited grace at his throne, it's unlimited help. And so I think that's what helped me be, become sanctified. That's good. And so now, like if somebody talk crazy to me, I probably just try to give them the gospel. Yeah. 10 years ago, I was ready to, to knuckle up. Yeah, run up, get done up. You know what I'm saying? And so like, I think that, that Christians have to encourage, them to, to encourage themselves to know, that, no, no, God is doing the work, mm -hmm. right? And the work that he started in you, he's faithful to finish it if you run to him for yeah. it, for help. Yeah, I was while you were talking, I was thinking about what was what was underneath even me missing the club, for example, or like, you know, and I think some of that is the world feels fun. You know, it, it feels fun to go out with your friends and it feels fun to go out with your friends and listen to certain music and drink and do all of that. It's like a it's like a perversion of fellowship. Mm -hmm. <laughs> like, yeah. like you're just going out and kicking it. So I think when I became a Christian, a part of the sanctification for me was the renewing of my mind of what fun was. Mm -hmm. Like the Lord had to teach me what fun is because I think the the flesh... And Satan wanted me to think that drunkenness and a lack of sobriety and sexual perversion and uh, like, you know, like that type of like what the Bible even calls debauchery, like that, that type of stuff was fun. But something happens when the Lord renews your mind and changes your heart where the funnest thing is, is what would honor God mm. with other Christians. Yeah, and, yeah. and so what I mean is. Now I don't have to go to the club and have fun. Yeah, yeah. Like we can we can literally go out to eat, we could play spades, we can do stuff like that. And it's it's fun to me because I I, I enjoy purity. Yeah. I didn't enjoy pu purity before. And yeah. so like sometimes it's like, man, 
I don't want to be a Christian because they don't have fun. It's like, no, we don't have sinful fun. Yeah. Like, uh, even David said, like, at your right hand are pleasures mm. forevermore. We're at his right hand. Yeah. So that means, like, who created pleasure? Yeah. The Lord did. Because I do, think... Do you know who made orgasms? Do you know who created those? God. And I'm so glad he did. Imagine <laughs> what kind of... What kind of God do you have to be to create an orgasm? Mm. I'm, I'm sorry. I'm, that's extra, but I'm saying. I mean, our I'm anniversary saying, in two weeks. Preston, I'm you're just doing saying, the absolute No, most. I'm saying, can we praise God for anniversaries? You're doing a I'm, lot. Listen, I'm not even talking about, I'm not even talking about orgasms. I'm simply I'm trying to make the I'm thinking point, about the beach. I'm thinking about the water. You're not. Okay, you just I'm, went. You went somewhere we wasn't supposed okay, to go. Okay, I'm lying a little bit, but God still sanctify me. God is still sanctify me. Back here. Can we thank God for anniversaries? If God made <laughs> orgasms, then God made joy. You, you. That's the point I'm trying to make. If God made joy, you can't tell me that being in Him, you won't experience what joy is. I see where you're going with that. No, that was good. No bad. <laughs> That was a really good point. Thank you. But, but what, what I'm saying is... Do you understand what I'm saying? No, I do, I do. Because Seriously. that's a stronghold for a lot of people is that Christianity doesn't seem fun. Yeah. The problem isn't that Christianity isn't fun. It's that your definition of fun is off. Yeah, and 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 that's because I think, you, you know, a lot of us have, like, we still have that old nature because we haven't met the Lord yet and a lot of us are still holding on to an old nature. Yes. Right? And so, when, when, you, when you talk about worldliness, the Bible the Bible defines what's in the world when it says, do not love the world, Go nor ahead. the things of this world, for all that is in the world is the lust of the flesh, the lust of the eye, and the pride of life. For it is not of the Father, but of this world, right? And this world is passing away in the lust thereof. And so I, I think when we think about worldliness, we have to ask ourselves, what is in me that's attracted to the lust of the flesh, the lust of the eye and the pride of life? Can you right? teach that real quick? Right? What is the lust of the flesh? The lust of the flesh is thing like like submitting and being a slave to what we feel other than what the Lord has said. Yes. Right. And so that's that's whatever whatever we whatever feels right whatever tastes right we we just we just submit to it mm -hmm. right that's the lust of the, lust, the lust of the eye is like uh, I love what Job said in, in Job right he said I made a covenant with my eyes not to look on a woman with lust mm -hmm. a binding agreement so whatever we see right whatever we, you know what I mean the, the, and then the pride of life we, we all know what that is mm -hmm. right like pride is like will literally kill us mm -hmm. it's destruction right and so like we become a slave to those three things and that, and I hate when people call things that's not worldly like why you ain't no shoes that's worldly like what are you talking about like the bible <laughs> tells us what's worldly if it doesn't fall into those three categories like right. well, you know why are you why are you holding your, your glass like that that's worldly well, you looking like the world it's like you don't know your bible <laughs> <laughs> what are you talking about um yeah and so like like we have to ask ourselves what is what, what what's in us mm. what what's what's in our nature that makes us attracted to to be quite frank, death, mm. <laughs> right? The, the, he literally says, for all that is in the world is the lust of the flesh, the lust of the eye, and the pride of life, for it is not of the Father. Yeah. Then he goes on to say, but of this world. And he said, the world is passing away yeah, and is. the lust thereof. Yeah. But he who does the will of God will abide forever. It's will remain KJV. forever. It's right? KJV. Come on. Right, right, Get right. And so, like, we have to understand that 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 God wants us to truly enjoy the pleasures of life, not pervert, not perverted versions of it. Mm -hmm. And we literally love perverted versions of pleasure and not the real thing, which because is, of our nature. Which is to say that many of the experiences that we have fun with or we enjoy in the world have a semblance of something God made for us to enjoy in him. Yeah. Right. So when I said a perversion of fellowship, going out to the club with your friends, hanging out with your friends, all of that is community. It's just community around sin instead of community around Christ. Yeah. Right. And so how can I honor the fact, okay, what I really want is community with people who are like-minded. So God, help purify my understanding of community. Provide that, right? Yeah. Whether it's music. Like music is a such a mysterious, beautiful gift 
that God has given us to enjoy, right? And th- there's a sense in which even the Psalms, which are songs, like mirror our human emotional experiences. That's something God made. So mm. God helped renew my mind around music, right? Like, yeah. so like, I'm saying identify the common grace that yeah. it is that you're experiencing and then submit that to the Lord and ask him to purify your vision. You know what that, rem- you know what this reminds me of? I hope this is not too far off topic, but it just reminded me of this. And I think this is a practical practical example of what we're talking about. Um, last year sometime, uh, me and my friends, we went to um, Cuba. Yes. Um, because uh, I have a friend who went through a hard divorce and it was his first time not being with his wife. And he was like, you know, I want to just spend time with my friends. And so we went to Cuba because he has people there where he gives money to and fellowships with and stuff like that. Um, and so we went there with them and all the Airbnbs there have to have a host. Mm -hmm. That's how the government has it. Right. Mm -hmm. And so when we went there, right, mind you, me and all my friends, we similar, Mm -hmm. we all ex hood dudes who love Jesus. Mm -hmm. Right. We all came from the hood and, you know, we love Jesus. And so the, the taste we we the things we taste for are just different now. Yes. And this is the reason why we have common ground. This is the reason why we have fellowship with one another, right? And so while we were in Cuba, all our host just kept saying kept telling us, when you guys bring back women tonight, mm-hmm. <laughs> she was like, please let me know so I can count them. Mm-hmm. And we kept saying, We're not bringing back any women. Mm-hmm. So then she finally said, Are you guys? Are you guys? Are you guys gay? No, it was like, no, 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 no. We're not gay. We're not gay men. We all have wives. But guess what? We just love she Jesus. She said, I ain't never seen this before. But, but, we, but we, yeah, but we just all love Jesus. And we actually came to Cuba to, to fellowship with some friends that, that we know out here. Well, my friends, friends mm-hmm. that we know out here. And we came to do what we what we love. We, we love to drink coffee. We love Cuban coffee. And we came to buy art because the art galleries out here are amazing you like cigars so you can say that oh yeah and i and i i, I love smoking cigars so i want to smoke a cup of cubans mm-hmm. um and so this is what we came out here to do and i told them the second night i was like man do you know how beautiful this is mm-hmm. we were sitting on the porch and i was like man we all came from the hood right if this was 15 years later we would we would have been because the clubs out there was popping mm-hmm. the women out there was popping but we found fellowship with one another mm-hmm. we found fellowship um, and enjoying the things that God has given us because he changed our nature. And we was out there praying for people, evangelizing the people, buying art, enjoying one another, eating good food. Mm-hmm. And we were actually enjoying the things in life because God gave us a different taste, mm-hmm. right? Mm-hmm. Right. And so long story short, the last night, well, the night before we left, um, we see a man come out the guest room because it was like a pool guest room with an air pump on his... um attached to his 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 body or whatever. And we was like, who was that? She was like, that's my husband. You haven't seen him the whole time because he's been in bed rest. The night before we leave, this man dies. Which is so sad. He dies. And we were able to pray with her, to give her the gospel, right? She has sensory knee altars. Sensoria. Sensoria. I'm sorry, I said it wrong. Altars all in her yard. Mm-hmm. You know what I'm saying? All outside is just, you know what I'm saying? Because she believes in like, the ancestors. The, the ancestors, the, you know, mm-hmm. and stuff like that. And we were able to be a light to her. And one of the things she said was, she said, I've never received a group like you guys. Wow. I've never received a group like you guys. Mm-hmm. And so what is the, what are the odds of us being there and her and her husband dying while we were there? Mm. While a group of Christian men mm-hmm. who she's never seen men walk like that before were able to pray with her. And I just say that to say this, like there are ways for us to enjoy the fullness of what God wants us to enjoy and real have fun while still being used by the Lord if we just surrender our worldliness and our old nature to him. I have a text. Okay. And inspired a text. It inspired too, because originally I was thinking about um, just what, what when Paul talks about being a new creature, mm-hmm. you know, like what that what that means. Because for so long, I think when I was growing up around church and in church, I thought that I had to make myself new. Mm-hmm. And so let me stop cursing. Let me stop lying. Let me stop, you know, watching certain stuff. And that didn't change my nature. Yeah. God through his the power of his spirit had to regenerate 
So you talk about justification, being made right with God, regeneration, God doing a new thing, making me a new creature. Mm-hmm. And out of this newness flows new life, yeah. new desires, new passions, new wants, new new thoughts, new perspectives. And, and so like, I think what you're saying is like just evidence that God is faithful yeah. to actually change people yep. in real life. Yeah. Then the second thing that came to my mind which I cannot find is in Timothy somewhere where he talks about like being a a clean vessel. Yeah. Second Timothy verse or chapter two, it says, therefore, if anyone cleans, cleanses himself from what is dishonorable, he will be a vessel, 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 an instrument for honorable use, set apart as holy, useful to the master of the house, ready for every good work. Mm -hmm. The fact that y'all were not giving yourselves over to carnality and worldliness, set y'all up as being useful when that lady needed somebody to come for her in her grief. That's good. Right? Because if y'all was out here inviting women in and doing the most and being hypocrites, one, you probably wouldn't even have the compassion necessary Mm. to meet her where she needed, right? Right. But you also wouldn't have had her respect. Mm -hmm. And so, like, there's something about what God is trying to do when he delivers us from worldliness and carnality. He's making us more useful. Yeah. Yeah. Because God is sovereign. God wouldn't allow that 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 woman husband to die while we was there if we was bringing back prostitutes. Yes. But he was like, he was like, not only can you comfort her, but you can comfort her because you're a faithful witness. You can be a witness. My God, throw the altars away. Right. The ancestors can't hear you. Right, right, right. They can't save you. Because because they because, can't deliver because she couldn't run to those those altars, but she did have people who knew the Lord yes. there at her time at her time of grief. Because she came out the next morning, literally trying to serve us. Because the, it's their job to like make coffee in the in the mornings for the Airbnbs out there. So she came out dressed in all black, and we like your husband went to the hospital yesterday. Oh, he died. Wait, 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 wait. Pause. Mm-hmm. Like we are like what? Mm-hmm. Are you serious? Let's sit down and talk about right. this. No, 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 no. You want bagels? Like, no, we don't want no, no bagels. No, 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 ma'am. Like, we want to t- we want to talk to right. you about your husband. Right. It's okay to cry, right? Right. And so, yeah, that, that just shows me like, and so not only did God save us, right, and sanctify us through, through the years, but he was faithful to put us together to give us fellowship, mm. right? And so not only would God save you and sanctify you, but he will send like-minded people for, for you to enjoy life with and do this walk with yeah. if you're faithful to him. But if all you're concerned about it or or um, uh, uh, attracted by is worldliness, yep. you're going to... Want to be around worldly people? Birds of a feather, feather flock together. And so I know we probably sound like really old, but it's like no, it's not. <laughs> it, it really is like you can you can still be cool. You ain't got to be lame. You ain't got to be a cornball. Right. But you can still love Jesus and enjoy the things that He's giving you. Um, and it's not God keeping you from fun. It's no your your nature. Your yeah. nature has to change. Cause uh, I'm I'm gonna sound like a revivalist. Hell ain't fun either. You know, like if, if the if the flesh is fun to you, you're deceived. Yeah. I'm sorry to say it. Yeah. Um, and because even you saying what the world is, lust of the flesh, pride of life, what's the other one? Lust of the eye, uh, lust, lust of the flesh and the pride of life. I, do we find it ironic that those are the things that Satan <laughs> tempted Jesus with? Yeah. Hey, I know you're hungry. Here's some stones. Turn them to bread. Lust of the flesh. Lust of the flesh. Hey, I know you want to exalt yourself. How about you jump down off of this temple? When you do that, they'll see that you're the Messiah and they'll worship you. Pride, Pride of, of life. life. Hey, um, what's look, the other one? Look, look at all of these riches. Look at all the kingdoms in the world. I'll give I, them all to I'll you. I'll give you all of what you see if you just bow down at... You don't worship think, me, lust of the eye, right? You don't think he's not replicating those same, tem- same temptations to us, and that's exactly what we are tempted with. Look, look how much how they they drunk, but look how much how, how, how much fun they having, lust of the eye, right, right. Therefore, look. my point, it's satanic. <laughs> that's, that's the point I'm trying to make. It, it's set, some of our fun has Satan as its origin, Woo. and so we need deliverance. That's good. Lay hands on us, Father, and that's deliver good. us from evil. And, 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 and I, I, I think we're. I don't want people to think that we're here talking um, like two people who already received their glorified body. So, like, no. We started off where we came from because we want you to know that it is a process. And so if you are wrestling with it, we was listening to a sermon earlier um, where Piper was saying that um, that if you're not wrestling, 
if you don't have a wrestle with sin, it's probably evidence that you're not a Christian. Let, let and so it's be- nothing wrong with wrestling, but God wants to sanctify you through the wrestling. And so if you're just submitting to worldliness and not wrestling, that's a problem. Let me be clear. When we moved to Atlanta five years ago. Five years ago. That worldliness was trying to get a stronghold on me yep. because Atlanta is Babylon. Yep. You hear me? Yeah. I was like, oh, we could go to a restaurant that ain't, it's like the club, but it's not right, the because, club. It's I- technically, I'm eating salmon and lamb chops, so I'm technically <laughs> not at the club. Yeah, yes, you are, man. Because uh, uh, Atlanta got all these hookah lounges. Well, like like you said, they always sell uh, uh, lamb chops and uh, crab cakes. Yeah, yeah, and um, chicken and waffles with a grass with wall. grass walls. Um, and it's like, are we in a club? And then we started to feel like, nah, like this is no. What happened was, I kept going to these restaurant clubs, and people would be coming up to me like, I really love your ministry. I'm like, you know what? I don't, I don't belong here. <laughs> like, I, I'm not supposed to be in these. But what what shifted me is that I started working on my book, Holier Than Thou. And in that, I asked the Lord to use it to change me. And he gave me a vision of his holiness in such a way that it revealed even the worldly parts that still existed in me. Mm. I, I was I was going to these places and trying to just, and this is four some years ago, going to these places and justifying my presence in the room because I wanted to be there. Yeah. Right? But the Lord had to show me, I one, I'm 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 using you, so this is affecting your witness. Yeah. But two, you don't belong in these rooms. Like the, stop, like it was like the the, the enemy was trying to slowly revert me back to the same things that the Lord snatched me from in the beginning of my walk, which mm. I said was related to clubs and music. Yeah. You know what I'm saying? And then out of that, then the Lord snatched me from me entertaining certain secular music and stuff like that. And so I think I'm only saying that to say we're talking about what we're constantly wrestling with. What would you say to the person who would say those places um, aren't... Um, innately evil like it's not blatant evil to sit around at a at a, at a lounge while people doing hookah I'm not doing hookah I'm just I, I like they salmon like <laughs> you know I like the way I like taking pictures in front of their grass wall like what, what would you say for people who say that's not sinful I think, would, you, would, you, would you say it's a matter of personal conviction or sinful for everybody who's there's who's levels safe? so yeah. we just talking about Atlanta right yeah there's some places it's just a black owned restaurant that doesn't necessarily have a club like atmosphere they just got you know certain music a lot of food etc cetera, etc cetera. like if if the if the music doesn't distract you or or cause you to think about things that aren't pure then eat your salmon and get up out the way, right? But there's a second level where it is very much a club environment. The the clothing is very club oriented. The feel, the vibe, where there's like this this uh, like we've been in spaces where I was like, this feels dark. Yeah, it, it feels perverted. It feels lustful. It feels there's no light, no life here, and mm. I gotta go. And so I, I yeah. think there's levels to it, but I think we gotta stop saying is it sin or is it not. The the, the question is, is if I go in this room. Will I be a witness to Jesus by being here? And does this distract me or tempt me to move in a direction that is opposed to righteousness? Yeah. I, I think that widens it where it's less about, is this sin? Is this not sin? It's like, is it making me holier to be in the room or not? Yeah. Yeah. Yeah, for sure. I, I agree. I agree. Because we ain't have we ain't had to wrestle with that in, in Chicago. Yeah. Because none of that exists. Yeah. You know what I'm saying? In Atlanta. So I think people who are in regions where the worldliness is a bit more intense, which which Atlanta definitely is, a LA, uh, some parts of Vegas. Like, I think we have a particular, we have to have a different mindfulness yeah. on how we move in these these cities. Yeah. And it, it, it's kind of like when the Lord saved me um, in his sovereignty, he took me to my auntie house in the suburbs. Yeah, and I had, he had to, to snatch you out. He had to snatch me out, and even, even when I came, I had to be careful about the environments that I came in because it's like, man, my homeboys walking past me, or my cousins walking past me, and I'm like, that weed smell good. Yeah, I'm just being honest. That weed smell good. Yeah, that's that ain't even mid. That's some troll. I, <laughs> I want some of that. You know what I'm saying? Or they talking about all the women that yes. they. You know what I'm saying? Like, like, you, like it's not necessarily sinful being there. But is it helping my sanctification process? Right. Is it helping me become more godly, or is it, or is it 
a stumbling block mm-hmm. in the way of my sanctification process because God cares about that. And if you pray, because I, because we have to stop looking at sin as did God say this? I don't see nothing about about hookah lounges. Right. We gotta stop. We gotta stop saying that because all disobedience, right? Because even though God has given us His revealed words to know what we shouldn't do. He's also revealed himself through the person of Jesus Christ and gave us his spirit who leads us into all truth. Yeah. And so if when we pray and say, God, do you want me here? We have to be, be honest and, and say, is God leading me here? And if, and, if, and if he's saying no and we're still going, that's also still sin, even yeah. though it's not in his Bible. So. Yeah, because I, I, I feel like I re- reiterate, there are some things that's just a matter of witness. So uh, I think Paul's exhortation for them not to eat food uh, sac- like food that was like sacrificed to idols mm-hmm. at the temple. Or well, like, even tattoos or marking your flesh, yeah. He, he says like, if you're at the temple eating that food, people will assume that you also agree with the the basically the worship of these false gods. Yeah, yeah. So don't go there. That's a witness. That's a love thing, right? But if you have that food at the crib, you know what I'm saying? So I think witness matters. Yeah. It, it really does. But also our conscience. Yeah. We we want to maintain a pure conscience. And so if you always feel this tension about certain music or certain conversations or, or certain friends, really like lean into that because I need you to know God is not trying to take something good from you. God is trying to give something good to you. And so deliverance from carnality, deliverance from worldliness opens your capacity to receive more of his fullness. And in his fullness is actual joy. But let me say this too. That's good. That's really good. But let me just say this too, because I think it might be some Christians here who say, well, my conscience, I don't have a, I don't, I don't, I don't feel anything. And I think you have to ask yourself if you truly are in Christ, did you originally feel something? Mm. Because there is a sense in which you can harden your heart. Our our hearts can become hard. Our conscience can, can become seared. And, I think, for example, for me, there was um, really during the pandemic where people stopped going to church and stopped being around the saints. Mm. I saw a shift in a lot of Christians. For sure. And I saw a lot of Christians who moved one way. And then after the pandemic, it was like, you got around a particular type of crowd. Mm-hmm. And, and, and so- Everything might, is a liberty. You, <laughs> might, you, you, might not have, you might not have that same conviction, mm. but that doesn't mean it ain't wrong. Right. That's good. Right. Because I think what Satan's job is, is to harden our hearts over a period. Like one thing I can give Satan credit for, if I can give him credit for anything, he's patient. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. Over a course of time, he hardens our hearts more and more. Mm-hmm. He makes us un like he makes the Christian community and things of God unattractive more and mm-hmm. more if we don't submit those things to Jesus. And so you just have to have the humility to say, God. I didn't. Ha- I don't have an affection for you like I used to. I did that. Help me. I did that. Like, like, like God. Like, in order for us to obey and love God, we need God's help. I did that when we were dating. And oh, you was like, I don't like him, God. Nah, we we kept like kissing and stuff. Oh, and it was it was going a little far, and we we ain't never go all the way, but we was we was going too far. And the first time <laughs> we, the first time we had kissed, I remember. I was crying. Yeah. I was so grieved. Like, oh my God. I, I just, I just, I was lusting. God, I'm I sitting just, against I you. Sad. I was, I was outside. I on, tasted his lips. I'm I was outside on the steps crying, reading Psalm 51. Like, God, like make me white as snow. I know you're able to do it. But then we kept doing it. Not doing it, but like we kept, we kept getting into these very lustful interactions and I was driving and I noticed I wasn't as convicted anymore and it scared me. Yeah. It legitimately scared me where I was like, oh, like, why is it becoming easier for me to do this? Yeah, I remember And that's, this. that's the process of hardness yeah. is that I, w- I kept putting myself with Preston in situations to sin and I wasn't actually repenting. Yeah, and I wasn't, because yeah, I wasn't being a good let, leader. Let me finish. Like, <laughs> there is a such thing as worldly grief. Mm-hmm. Whereas like you feel bad 
but you don't necessarily, you're not grieving the fact that you sinned against God in such a way that it changes how you move. When there is real repentance, you move different. Mm -hmm. So I became like, oh, we're not hanging out at this time. We're not doing this. We not. Like I had to put measures in place to guard my conscience. Yeah. And that's ultimately what we're saying. That's it, good. That's really good. Yeah. Yeah. I, I agree. I think for me, um, yeah, there, there, there were times in my Christian walk where I'm like, the things that used to convict me don't convict me anymore. Mm -hmm. I get angry at people and I snap at people. And that three years ago, I would that would be on my heart all day and on my conscience. I would, I would wake up the next morning thinking yeah. about how I offended people and I couldn't move until I re repent and, and apologize to that person. Yeah. Now it's like, I don't care. Yeah. And it's like, God hasn't changed, I have. Yeah. Right? And in order for me to, to get back there, I have to say, God, help me, right? I have to run to him, right? And I, I think a lot of times people get tired of running to God because mm -hmm. it's way easier to run to the things that the world offers you, offers you. And it's like, now you just, oh, uh, well, I'm in a different place now. We know that. That's the problem. <laughs> you, you're at a different place now, but that don't mean it's the safest place. The safest place is where you was at. And so just because you feel a certain way doesn't mean it's justified, right? Godly conviction is what you need to have. And if you don't have that, you need to run to God and say, God, help me. Continue to sanctify me. I need you. I repent, right? And God honors that humility. So. I got a text. Okay, got another text. I love how you keep picking up the Bible. Because there's so many people out here with opinions on these podcasts with, with no Bible. And so we, we got to retrain our minds to, to see that. That's good. Verse, Psalm 51, create in me a clean heart. Remember we were talking about regeneration? Mm -hmm. Create, give me a clean heart, O God, and renew a right spirit within me. Cast me not away from your presence and take not your Holy Spirit from me. Restore, bring back the joy of your salvation mm. and uphold me with a willing spirit. And I need you to recognize that he is, he is making these petitions to God as the only one who can do what he's asking. Only God can give me a clean heart. Only God can renew a right spirit within me. Only God can, can, can keep me. Only God can restore to me the joy of my salvation. Only God can withhold me. And so for us to stay away from worldliness, for us to be holy, for us to be pure, for us to be kind and gentle and compassionate and all the things we need him. Yeah. And so that emphasizes why we have to stay close. Because yeah. if we don't stay close, we will drift. It's inevitable. Yeah, yeah. But even in the drifting, acknowledge the drifting and turn back. Yeah, and I and I also want to just be sensitive because I, I believe if this was my third or fourth year walking with the Lord, I could potentially hear a podcast like this and feel condemned if, I, if I'm drifting off. And what we're not trying to do is condemn anybody for not being holy enough or righteous enough. We're just saying we can't be holy and righteousness or righteous on our own. And so we need to run to Jesus in order to be so. But if you feel like that, 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 that worldliness is coming back, that, um, that lack of conviction um, is, is kind of like wearing off. Godly conviction is wearing off. We're saying that because sanctification is a process, you have to consistently remind yourself that, no, I need to run to Jesus for help. Because the only way we get as mature in Christ and we're not, we're nearly, not. We're not nearly as mature as we, as we should be or could be, right? Um, it's because we just kept running to Jesus. And so if we're trying to do anything, it's not to discourage you, but to encourage you to run to Jesus. You're not perfect. We're not perfect. No Christian is perfect. We're not perfect people. We're people who trust in, in a perfect God. And so I that's think that's Christianity. That's Christianity. Yeah. So, yeah. All right. Peace. Bye.